All right, this is Larry Freed coming to you from that shelf based in Toronto, Canada. So you're in Canada. I studied at the at the Sick Children of Toronto. So I have a couple of friends there, University Avenue. I remember that very well. All right. Well, have you been there since? Yes, yes, a couple of times. Always nice in summer. Big change. Roberto, it, it really is a, a distinct pleasure to get to speak with you. And I really want to thank you so much for uh, everything that you gave to this project. I'm, I was really taken by this film and taken by the story. I've spoken to a couple of uh, subjects of films like this, and I feel like everybody sort of has their own unique uh, experience watching themselves and their story portrayed on screen in, in this sort of fashion. What, we, what was your reaction when you first watched the film? Well, I think it's a film to share. It's a film to, to share with my family, with my grandsons, they say, I want to climb mountains like you, grandpa, and he's 40 years old. And, and also because it's a unique chance to be there again. The, the, this film is using all the technology and going to the limits. I mean, they were filming in the same place at 50,000 feet, and all this gi gives you a, an input that makes you your part of, of, of the film. It's a film that you should go and release yourself. But when the film finishes, you have a very strange a feeling of emptiness, of, uh, of abstraction of the world. You have emerged yourself in the society of the snow. So it's, it's my advice that you must take some time after the filming in order to enjoy and probably see it a couple of times because there are so many, many details that made the society of the snow in which we had to transform ourselves that if you want to, to learn about them, you must take your time. Absolutely. Well, this is coming to Netflix, so thankfully people will get to see it very easily multiple times. Uh, yeah, but it's wish. good to see it in a big screen. I mean, you, you, you cannot see in, in your iPhone the, the Andes Mountains, of course. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, it's a movie that demands to be shown on the big screen. Were you at all sort of um, in, you know, uh, impressed by the scale of it? I mean, this film is really a technical achievement on, in every level. Well, I think uh, uh, Bayona took all the all the chances that life could give him. He filmed in Uruguay, he filmed in Chile, he filmed in Spain. So, and, and all the technology of the crash, it's a, it's a first, best level. So uh, I believe that there's a, conver a convergency of factors that make such an outstanding masterpiece. My last question here for you, Roberto, I'd love to hear about your reaction to when Bayona first told you that one of the major characters of the story was going to be Numa who is a bit of an unconventional choice to, to place the film in because he was not a member of the rugby team, who I think in previous versions of the story, people really focused on that team. What was your reaction to when he decided, when you heard that Bayona decided that Numa was going to be arguably the, the most forefront character? Well, there was a huge issue among the survivors. But uh, now I understand there was a, a, a great artistical decision of, of Bajona because he gives the chances of the people that were not there. And when I see the, the film and I see all that Numa suffered, I say, my dear friend, I hope I would have been more time with you. And with Arturo Nogueira and with other actors there, it's very interesting that I'm back to the fuselage, but in a different role. As a more as as a, as an spectator, and with all feelings and no needs. Amazing, Roberto. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for all that you gave to this retelling of your story. And I, I wish you all the best. I hope you come back to Toronto very soon. Absolutely. See you there.